Hello everyone, my name is Olivia and today we're going to talk about not 10 of my most recent reads, but 20. And this video is kindly sponsored once again by Skillshare, so thank you so much to them for supporting this series and my channel in general. As you all know, I love Skillshare, and they are a wonderful online learning community full of courses on an array of topics like film, photography, creative writing, productivity, and so much more for those looking to develop some skills or try something completely new. There are so many classes you can take on Skillshare that can relate to your interests if you love writing stories as much as you love reading them, Skillshare offers amazing courses on writing taught by best-selling authors who share their insights on their craft. And you all know I love watching plant-related courses as well, like Plants at Home, Uplift Your Spirit and Your Space, to learn more about how to care for my plants in my house. If you are interested in joining Skillshare, the first thousand of you to click the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium to try out for yourself. And if you want to continue that membership, it will be less than $10 a month. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring me yet again, and now on to the recent reads. You heard it here, folks. I'm not going to just talk about 10 books, but 20 books that I have recently read because I am very behind on this series. So let's start with American Royals by Catherine McGee. This is a YA contemporary following an alternate universe of America where they have a royal family and the royal family is the Washington family. So this novel follows the three youngest siblings of the Washington household and the shenanigans that they get up to while they are living in a royal setting. While I did fly through this novel and it felt like watching a soap opera right before my eyes, I did not really enjoy majority of the point of views that we were given and the main romance that occurred in this novel was just not believable for me. I feel like they didn't have enough chemistry or interactions to warrant such a grand romance that took over the entire plot of the story. This is the type of novel that you enjoy while you read it, but once you close the book and really think about the plot line, you come up with a multitude of things that you did not enjoy about the story. It's enjoyable in the moment, but once you think about it for more than a minute, you can come up with so many different issues that happened in this story that you didn't really enjoy. So it was fun to pass the time, but it wasn't a good book in my opinion. Once I started thinking about the issues in the pacing, in the points of views, in the characters, in the romance, it started adding up and I didn't really enjoy it. Then we have Second Chance Summer by Morgan Matson. I DNF'd this book at 50% because I just did not care about it. It was a very slow moving YA contemporary following a family that goes to their summer house because the father of the family is terminally ill and they want to spend this last summer together enjoying their family before their lives drastically change. I know so many people who enjoy this novel who really loved it when it first came out but it just was not the book for me. It was very slow moving and I was not really connected with the characters nor the storyline. So I thought why read a book that I'm not really enjoying when I can be reading something else. So I just decided to DNF this book. Then I read two middle grade books from the same imprint, which was Rick Riordan Presents. So I read Paula Santiago and the River of Tears, and this is centered around Mexican mythology and La Llorona, which is about a creepy ghost that haunts riverbanks. And then I read Tristan Strong Punches a Hole in the Sky, which centers around West African mythology. Both of these middle grades I read on audiobook, and I really enjoyed enjoy Rick Riordan Presents books read on audiobook because the narrators really bring these stories to life in a very cute and quirky way. The way that they voice different characters and the way that they're also snarky is so enjoyable. I think if you have a young reader, they would love these novels because it teaches you about different mythologies from around the world and they're also funny and cute. Then I read Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead, which is a story that was recommended to me when I was looking for translated fiction. And this is translated from Polish and it follows a woman who lives in Poland whose neighbor Bigfoot has recently died. And that is what gripped me into the story. I thought her neighbor is Bigfoot and he's dead. 
that is so cool. I have to read the story. But then I read the story on audiobook and I realized that Bigfoot is a neighbor, but that's just a nickname that she gave them. And they're not actually Bigfoot, which was a bit of a letdown. And I feel like the rest of the story was a letdown as well because it was a very big stream of consciousness type of narrative. You follow this woman who is older and she's a really big spectator of her town. She likes to watch her neighbors and analyze them and kind of meddle in their lives. While it was an interesting premise, I feel like the story was a letdown because I'm not a fan of stream of consciousness type of narratives. I think they're very bogged down and they don't really serve a purpose. You're kind of reading this novel and you're like, okay, but what's the purpose of this story? And there is no real purpose. And I know some people may like that, but it just isn't my type of thing and I wish I knew that going in because I might have avoided this book. But if you're a fan of stream of consciousness, if you're a fan of really unique audiobooks, then I think it would be the book for you, but it just was not the book for me. Then I read Sex and Vanity by Kevin Kwan, who is the author of Crazy Rich Asians, which I love. And I read this book on audiobook. It is a contemporary about a woman named Lucy who meets this guy named George when they are teenagers at a wedding in Capri. And they instantly are enemies to each other. And then they grow closer to one another during this vacation in Capri and it kind of gets scandalous. And then years pass by and they meet again as adults. And Lucy is now engaged and George is very successful and alluring. And she has to deal with the fact that she's still very much attracted to this man years later. My main issue with this book was there was no actual plot to it. It was mostly just Lucy pining after George in their very brief interactions that they have with one another, which made their romance very unbelievable for me. It just was not as good as Crazy Rich Asians, which had an actual plot to it and had an actual goal in mind. And I feel like Sex and Vanity was mostly just describing how rich people live and what they eat and what they wear and what they drive and it was just very overdone and I feel like there was no actual plot to the story. My goodness, I am just telling you about all these books that I did not enjoy. Can you tell that my 2020 reading year is not good? The next book that I read was on audiobook and it was Alex Trebek's memoir and it is called The Answer Is and it is narrated by Ken Jennings who is a contestant in Jeopardy who has won the most amount of money. As someone who loves Jeopardy and Jeopardy means a lot to me, I really enjoyed learning more about Alex Trebek's life, his upbringings, his strifes, and his triumphs in life. And it was such a good way to get to know him a little bit better as someone who is a really big fan of him. I do wish that the whole entire audiobook was narrated by Alex, but maybe there were certain situations where he was unable to narrate the entire thing. He did narrate certain sections of this book, but most of the time it was narrated by Ken Jennings. And I just kind of wish that Alex Trebek narrated it himself because those moments when he spoke felt so personal and so lovely and I feel like that would have strengthened the audiobook overall but it was still an enjoyable read to learn about his life and to learn about him as a person and what he stands for and it was a really fun audiobook to read. It was nice to learn more about him. Then I read a book for a very low-key book club that I created with friends where we just read a book together and we discussed it on Google Hangouts and we spoke for four hours not about the book but just about life and just enjoying each other's company while stuck at home and it was so fun and I highly recommend it if you're looking for a way to connect with friends. At first we did talk about the book for an hour but for the other three hours where we were speaking to one another we were just talking about life and it was just so fun and wholesome and I really enjoyed that experience. And the book that we read together was City of Brass which is a Middle Eastern inspired fantasy that I cannot really explain because there is such a vast very complex magic system to this fantasy that I just cannot explain because I don't read enough fantasy and I feel like I'm not equipped enough to explain it, but so many people love this series and I wanted to join the bandwagon so my friends and I decided to read this together and I feel like this is a very big setup book. I feel like it's really introducing you to the setting, the characters, the magic system, and I feel like the second book would be explosive. So while I did enjoy this fantasy, I wasn't the 
biggest fan of it, but I feel like it was just setting things up for the rest of this series. Because I love pain, I read the Little Women screenplay. I printed out the screenplay, which is available online if you just Google Little Women screenplay. Vanity Fair published it for anyone to consume so i downloaded the pdf and printed out the screenplay at staples so i can annotate it and really dissect the screenplay and this screenplay was phenomenal it was so enjoyable greta gerwig really brings these characters to life and i feel like reading the screenplay adds a whole other layer of depth to this movie and it just really made me connect with the characters even more and it brought so much pain and joy and love into my heart and it made me appreciate the film that much more. I was very lukewarm about the 2019 version of Little Woman. I enjoyed it, but I was not absolutely in love with it. But once I read the screenplay, I absolutely adored it and I feel like this made me love the movie that much more and made me gain such an appreciation for the film and the way that Greta adapted this well-loved book into a movie in such a unique and beautiful way I would highly recommend reading the screenplay because it adds so much more to the story and the descriptions that Greta gives that is not in the movie because it is just kind of cues for the actors to use to gain more knowledge of the character that they're playing. And I feel like as I read more screenplays, I'm going to always compare it to the Little Women screenplay because this one was just so phenomenal and beautiful and I cannot recommend it enough if you're looking to read screenplays. Then I read four Dark Academia books, which I spoke in depth about in my Dark Academia reading blog which I will link down below so you can watch that if you want to learn more about these books. But the first book that I read from that reading vlog was The Truins, then I read Catherine House, then I read Vita Nostra, and then I read Truly Devious. I'm just going to give you the bare bones summary of these books because if you want to learn more about my thoughts about each of them, you can go watch that vlog. So The Truins is a dark academia set in the UK. It's a very gloomy, very drama-filled book that I really, really enjoyed. Then we have Catherine House about a university that people go to for three years where they have no contact with the outside world. They can not listen to music. Everything is cut off from them, but they are guaranteed to change their lives for the better if they stay at Catherine House. Then we have Vida Nostra, which was translated from Russian, and this follows our main character Sasha, who is kind of forced to go to this university, otherwise bad things will happen to her loved ones, and in this university she is utterly transformed by the academics and the different magic and science that is used at this university. This one is very atmospheric and very beautifully written, but also incredibly confusing and incredibly weird. Then we have Truly Devious, which is a YA dark academia, and this follows a university where each student who attends it has a very unique skill that they have to bring to the table. Our main character's skill is true crime and forensics, and she sets to solve the mystery of the founder of this academy whose wife and daughter disappeared. If you want to know more about my thoughts about those novels, please go watch that Dark Academia vlog. I'm very proud of it and I speak in depth about all those novels. The next thing that I read was an audiobook but I do have the physical copy and it is The Girls in the Picture by Melanie Benjamin. This is a historical fiction following Mary Pickford and Frances Marion. Frances Marion is one of the most prolific, one of the most infamous silent film screenwriters and Mary Pickford is one of the most infamous silent film stars who was known as as America's sweetheart. So this story fictionalizes the friendship between Francis and Mary and how their lives were changed because of their friendship with one another and how they navigated the harsh and cutthroat world of old Hollywood. I absolutely loved this historical fiction. I did not know about Francis Marion before reading this audiobook and it just opened my eyes to this wonderful woman's career and how she was such a trailblazer in a career that is dominated by men. She really changed Mary's life by creating the persona of America's sweetheart that Mary had to play for the rest of her life and it also highlighted the fact that Mary had that very heavy expectation to act like a young woman and act like a young girl for her entire career. I feel like if you're a fan of old Hollywood, especially silent films, you would very much enjoy 
enjoy this because it talks about a piece of history of old Hollywood that isn't really highlighted and it is that friendship between Francis and Mary and how their careers greatly influenced each other. I think it was such a great and underrated historical fiction that I highly recommend. Then I read a nonfiction on audiobook and it was The Rape of Nanking, The Forgotten Holocaust of World War II, and this is by Iris Chang. I read this because Tiffany over at Read by Tiffany highly recommended this nonfiction before reading The Poppy War, which is a very famous fantasy novel that I have yet to read, but I wanted to read this nonfiction first to gain an understanding of the history that influenced the fantasy series The Poppy War. I did not learn about this at all in high school and I'm really sad that we did not learn about this piece of World War II that is so horrific and so harrowing and has created such a scar in the history of China and it's very comprehensive and easy to digest to learn about this piece of history that not a lot of people talk about and not a lot of people can talk about. This is an incredibly dark nonfiction that is not for the faint of heart but it also is incredibly important to hear about because it is a piece of history that we cannot forget. I'm really grateful for Irish Chang's work in documenting this massacre and really explaining it in a way that is understandable for people who aren't the biggest history buff and I think it's an important read if you want to learn more about the different sides of World War II that isn't really spoken about. Another audiobook that I read was Park Avenue Summer by Renee Rosen, and this is a Devil Wears Prada type of historical fiction following a woman who suddenly becomes a secretary for Helen Gurley Brown, who is one of the most infamous editors of Cosmopolitan. Helen Gurley Brown is the editor who changed the face of Cosmopolitan to make it into the magazine it is today where it talks about sex, it talks about marriage, it talks about relationships and different things that women have to deal with in life. And while I did enjoy this historical fiction, I did mention in my Goodreads review that it's not that memorable. There were certain aspects of the story that I feel like could have been edited out and I feel like it wasn't very necessary to the storyline, like the romance that was introduced to this story. It was enjoyable, but like I said, it just was very forgettable to me and I feel like it was just a book to pass the time. Another audiobook that I read was Between the World and Me by ta Coates, and this is a nonfiction chronicling ta experience being Black in America, and this memoir is written to his son. So this nonfiction explores ta past and his experience with racism throughout his life and the different lessons that he has learned and wants to pass down to his son. This is a amazing audiobook because it is narrated by the author himself and it adds such a personal touch to the nonfiction. It is a very quick nonfiction whether you read it physically or through audiobook but I highly recommend the audiobook. So if you are looking for a nonfiction to read to learn about race in America, I would highly recommend this one because it is just so profound and important and timely as always. Then I read Burial Rights by Hannah Kent and this is a historical fiction set in Iceland following a woman named Agnes who was recently arrested and sentenced to die for a murder that she committed with two other people. So before her execution day, she is sent to live on a very remote Icelandic farm with a family who will house her before her execution day. We not only get to follow Agnes as she slowly opens up to this family about her past, but we also follow the priest who was asked to help Agnes in her final days before her execution. This is historical fiction is incredibly atmospheric and really utilizes the setting to create this really dark and grim atmosphere. This is a very harrowing read because you're reading about someone who knows that they're going to die on a certain day and that day gets closer and closer. And it is also an incredibly well-researched novel. I was reading the blurbs for this novel and so many people commend this author for her research into Agnes's life and what it felt like to be in that atmosphere during a winter in Iceland. If you're looking for a historical fiction to read, if you're looking for an atmospheric book to read, if you're looking for a book that is based on a true story, I would highly recommend Burial Rights. It is horrifying and harrowing and the atmosphere that Hannah created was awe-inspiring. Then I read The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert and this is a YA contemporary and this follows two teenagers who meet on election day and Marva tries everything that she can to help Duke 
a complete stranger vote on election day because she says that his vote along with everyone else's is vital to express their feelings and to make a change in the world. This YA was really fun to read. I really enjoyed the two main characters and how they grew closer to one another throughout the day that they spent together. It kind of feels like insta-love but it's not because they don't say that they love each other by the end of the book but they do form a very real connection with one another throughout the day because they spent the entire day together and it also talks about the importance of voting and voter suppression and racism and I feel like Marva will be a very big inspiration to a bunch of different people who read this novel. Lastly, I read the Inception screenplay which is one of my favorite movies of all time. It just feels like you're watching the movie in your mind while reading this screenplay and I really enjoyed it and I also enjoyed the concept art. It wasn't as good as the Little Women screenplay but Christopher Nolan and Greta Gerwig write very different movies so it's kind of unfair to compare them both but I'm gonna do it anyway. I feel like I connected more with the Little Women screenplay but I still greatly enjoyed the Inception screenplay and I enjoyed annotating it and just highlighting it and diving back into the world of Inception. So those are the books that I recently read. I know I went through this a little bit quicker than I do with my other recent reads, but I hope you enjoyed learning about the different books that I read. Let me know if you have read any of these books and what you think about them, and let me know what you're currently reading as well. So thank you so much for your support and your kindness, and I hope you have a great day, and I will see you soon. Bye!